Hi, if you're watching this video, it's probably Justice. Hi, Justice. Sorry, I forgot to hit record. So we're talking about our clear cut species. We've determined that shrews don't like clear cuts. Their habitat's gone, okay? And also their, uh, uh, the habitat for the food is gone. Okay, now we're talking about indigo buntings. I have two in a bag. If you wanna see them later, uh, I'll show you. Okay, who's my indigo bunting folks? Okay, hold on. Talk to me. We know that bird species in general, okay, it's not too, it's not affected too bad. What about the bunting? Okay. The graph shows that um, they're more abundant in areas after clear cuts happen, but then it also, in a different page, it shows that they stay, it looks like really abundant for like the next 10 years, but then it kind of ah. So it's like good for like initial, like, yeah, party time. It's like freshman year at college where you're like, I got no parents, right? Let's get wasted, right? Like, yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. And then your senior is like, I should have partied so hard, mm -hmm. uh, right? Okay, uh, okay, good. I like, I like that. Okay, so initially great. Why, why initially great? What, what's happening? Excuse me, class. This has been a good time. Can we have the next slide, Wonder what Jane was doing here today. I should have done my hearing tests. Okay. Yeah. 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 Because the trees are gone and those shrubs. Because yeah. remember, this is like throwback rocks, right? Moss and lichens, grass, small trees and shrubs. Remember, secondary succession, clear cut is a secondary succession, right? Is it not? If I let it go, I'm tearing down all the trees, okay? I'm not going down to rock. I'm going down to soil. What's going to come back up? If I got bare ground, grass is going to come up, right? Then I'm going to get small trees and shrubs, right? So they like the small trees and shrubs. Okay, got, gotcha. What do they eat? Okay, insects and seeds. Okay, great. And then why do you think it starts to level back out? Bingo, right? We're not, we're no longer going from small trees to succession. See how all this stuff comes together? I just got chills because all that excites me. Right there, you got it? You, you see the pit, you see the, I love it. Okay, cool. Anything else to add about the indigo bunting? Um, yeah, Mom. Thank you once again for your contribution, Emma. I appreciate it so much. Yes. I cannot wait when you become a teacher, I'm gonna to come to your classroom and I'm gonna sit in there. Okay, uh, it's after I retire. Okay. I'm gonna volunteer at the you school you're at. Okay, what? <laughs> so what do we put? Yeah, clear cut? That's a yes, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah but not forever. Right, right. Okay, so now we're one-to-one. -one. Okay, good. All right, so now let's go to the timber rattler. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go poop. Go poop. Are you guys Tim Rattler? Yeah. Okay. Really? Yeah, they don't care. They don't care. Why? I don't know. Well, they, there's habitat for them either way, and they can still find plenty of prey. So they, they don't care. Okay. The population is the same, pretty much like a quarter of a percent lower than clear cut. Awesome. Yeah. So, so we just put maybe in the like, how about, there we go. All right. Okay. Timber rattler. Have you guys ever seen a timber rattler before? No. Again, we've established that we don't have them here, right? right. Okay. So we, yeah, the only venomous snake that we have is the, uh, the Mossasauga rattlesnake. But I have seen a timber, I st almost stepped on a timber rattler, rattler in Southern Indiana near, um, at this really cool place called Pine Hills Nature Preserve. It's run by the Nature Conservancy. It's right next to Shades. We should all go there sometime because it is like unbelievable. We need to camp. 
can we all camp sometime? Like, can we all, I got the tents, man. Let's go camping. What if we could get away with like, like a weekend, we happen to be there. I don't know. Let me figure that out. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I won't be there. Once again, tell those watching this video, this is just, you guys, shut up. We're never going to do this. Okay, all right. But I almost stepped on one, and it was it was freaky. It was on a stair, uh, and I stepped down on the stair and down again, and then I don't know why I looked back, and it was hiding, like, you know, these wooden stairs, like it was hiding underneath the, the one. It was so cool. Beautiful, beautiful snake, huh? I didn't poke it because I was like, was it, was it rattling? It was not rattling either, but I saw the rattler. I saw the, the rattler. We have them in India. We don't have them in Wabash County. Oh. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The only one we have, we have like we have the so we have the uh, cottonmouth in Indiana. We have the um, uh, copperhead in Indiana. We have the uh, mossasauga. We have the timber rattler. But the only one in Wabash County would be the mossasauga. All right, here we go. Oven bird. Who's got the oven bird? Nobody had the oven bird. Oh, I wondered why there was like, what happened to my oven bird? We'll come back to that. All right, Indiana back, right? Yeah, yeah, you gotcha. Oh, oh, sorry. No, no, no. Yeah, tell it's, us about it's it. Negative. It's negative. Okay, it's no. It doesn't like the clear cut. Yeah. Okay, sure. why is that? Um. Um, I kind of need some like smaller areas. It's a smaller bat, but like one positive thing that I found from the clear cuts is from clear cuts stuff they usually leave like dead trees. Yeah. Stuff like that. Well, yeah. The myotis in Dallas ends up living in like dead bark. Oh, cool. Like, dead trees. And cool. All that stuff. So I suppose that could help it, but I'd say due to smaller size, it needs more clustered areas. So okay. then it's gonna have a lot more space. Okay. What does it eat? It eats like uh, moss, other insects like okay. that. So I think from uh, clear cutting, like maybe right after the clear cut, it may be a feeding ground for the bat. Okay. It'll turn out pretty well. Okay. I'd say because after the trees come down, I imagine they pick up a bunch of insects. Okay, great. And whatnot, so. But the numbers definitely went down. Oh, yeah. yeah okay. Down. Okay. And mostly, do you think because of habitat loss, because yeah. of like the bigger, okay. Yeah. Anything to add? Who else was? Addison. Okay. Anything else to add, Addison, on that? Okay, cool. All right. So we got, we got a no. Two no, one whatever, one yes. All right, now let's look at the chipmunk. Yep. Yeah. Um, I mean, so that's not really like clear cuts. Okay. Um, so is that yes? Yes. Okay, yes. Their population, like for bows, decreased like a really significant amount after it was clear cut. But regardless, like after the clear cut, those that were living in the clear cut, like had a higher population. Um, and part of that's because, like with the clear cut, there's no like leaf litter on the ground. There's lots of like shrubby stuff and like wood debris for them to hide in. And I mean, they'll eat anything from like berries and like buds and seeds and that sort of stuff. So with like more shrubs and new plants, like they'll definitely get leaves and buds and all that stuff. Okay, great, great, great. So a, pa a pause, did that stay pretty much the same then? Or was it one of those ones that like the indigo bunting that it like went up, populations went up and then they leveled out yeah, or well, did they go back down to the original? Like from 2007 to 2010, it was like straight uh -huh. up. And then like 2009 and then 2009 to 2010, it just plummeted. And then it started to go back up. But okay. So it could have been an overshoot. Okay, cool. Okay, sounds good, sounds good. So we got two yes, two no, one whatever. All right, what about the salamander? I think this one might be an obvious one, but Maggie, what do you got? Definitely a no, okay? That was that was, was hopefully kind of an easy one, right? Okay, and why, why no on that one? Right. You put a salamander out of the sun, what's it gonna do? Oh yeah, it's gonna die, right? 
Okay, so yeah, where do you find salamanders? You turn logs over. Okay, that's your fine or in wells of people's yeah, uh, house. Jabin. That sort of thing, yes. I'm surprised you don't have like a salamander. So, okay, that's a great, they're really hard to keep. So I have had them like in my room, um, but then- No, they, like a dead one. Oh, a dead one? Oh, those are really also hard to keep because they get dried up. I have a dried frog somewhere. Um, but I feel so bad. I love I love salamanders almost as much as I love um, like birds. Um, and uh, but I like you don't often like the reason I have dead birds is because they run into the window and they're easy to find dead. Right? Dead salamanders are hard to find, and I don't want to kill one. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it is fun. Like if anybody ever brings one in, it'd be awesome. I find them all the time. You do? What kind? Yeah. Of this one. This one, yeah. So this one would be, there's a couple different, well, there's a great book called just Salamanders of Indiana. And this one uh, uh, is the Jeffersonian salamander. And, uh, and but, the, but it's also related to the blue spotted salamander too. So yeah, they're really cool. These could get big too. Not as big as the tiger salamanders. Those are, those are giants. Uh, Hallie, anything to add about that one? Or Emma, you were were you the were you on this one too? Yeah. Anything to add? Um, I couldn't really hear what Maggie said, but just that they like to stay in like moist areas, and if there's sunlight, then they're gonna dry up really easily. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Perfect. All right. What about the red bat? I have one more question. Oh, yeah. So. I always find it fascinating that they don't get like crushed because they have like yeah. tons of weight on them sometimes like going under logs. Yeah, it is weird, yeah. right? Like I, how do they not get crushed? It always makes me really nervous whenever we roll over a log and then my boys pick them up and then we put them back under and then roll the log back yeah. over. Yeah. I like to like not, but I mean, I have looked. I've like looked, are they still alive? It's just, it is amazing. There's lots of little- What kind of like, do they have like bones? They do have bones. But like, are they like, like I don't know if bones are flexible at all? Yeah, I don't, that's a great question. I don't know, you should, we should look, uh, if you're bored, you should get on Google Scholar and, and see if there's any papers on, um, uh, I don't know, what would you search for? Like, I don't know salamander habitat and huh yeah i don't know i'll look around too and see what i can find okay i don't know the answer to that either all right what about who i got two groups of the red bat right okay yeah justice if you want to go first that'd be yes okay so I got I got three yeses, three no's, and one whatever. Okay, why yes? Okay. Ah, awesome. Okay. So yeah, what what about this group in the back? You also had it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So not all bats are the same. Yours didn't like it, but yours yours loves it, right? Because of that echolocation. Yours is a little smaller bat. Yours is a little bigger bigger bat, correct? Okay. And that it's interesting, right? Okay. You don't think about that echolocation. Um, we have bats in our area. If we go camping someday, I will bring along my uh, bat monitor. I have a thing that hooks up to my phone and it detects bats by recording the echolocation. Um, and the app is really cool. I can't wait to show you. It's really, really cool. It will pop up and it will tell you the name of the bat based on this, the sound that it's making. And it shows you 
like it, uh, uh, in that, like al almost like a sonogram, you know, like uh, all of the, the, the waves from the sound. It's really, really cool. Um, and we have, I've used it at home. My boys like to, they're like, dad, can we check for bats tonight? I'm like, sure. So we go outside and we check and there they are. Um, when you become a biology teacher, um, everyone thinks that A, that you want a, every single hornet's nest in town uh, once they're torn down. I can't tell you, I get a call in, uh, when it's that time of year, at least once a week. Hi, this is, uh, is this a bio teacher? You want a hornet's nest? Thank you, no, uh, but appreciate it. And they also think that you're also a wildlife expert. So I've been called to people's homes to remove bats from their homes. The best uh, ever was a, a, a kid that graduated, called me, he was living in Fort Wayne at the time and said, my mom is deathly afraid of bats. There's a giant bat in our house. Can you go get it out? I was single at the time. I thought, what the heck, why not? Went to the woman's house, went to the woman's house, knocked on the door, no one came in the door. Okay, this is before cell phones, so I couldn't just call a kid up and say like, hey man, you know, your mom's not coming to the door. So I just went in the house. I walked in the house and I saw a bat and it was giant. It was a giant brown bat, but it was, it was very big. It was flying around in the kitchen. I look over and the mother, I can see the whites of her eyes in a dark bedroom and she's under the bed. Okay, like all I could, she's looking at me, like I could see her face and it's like, but she never speaks. I go, hello, Mrs. So-and-so, I'm here, your son called, I'm here to take care of the bat. Opened up the door, got a broom and just swooshed it out. Took about 10 minutes. The woman, I go, the bat is gone. The woman continues paralyzed to look at me, never says anything, so I leave. See her a couple days later in the grocery store. No thank you, no even recognition that I was in the house. It was like she was in a catatonic state. To this day, she has never mentioned it to me. Never. And I see this woman all the time. I have often wanted to say, like, during the time I like got that bat out, but I didn't want I don't want to like have her start rocking, you know, like in this weird thing. Okay, but I will tell you the reason I'm telling you this story other than it, that it was really weird, was like when you, whenever I've gotten bats, when I switch them out, or if I've grabbed them with my hands, they will echo locate on you. And it is like the coolest thing, maybe not ever, there's some really cool stuff out there, but like you can feel it penetrate your body. It is, I can't explain it, but it goes into you. So like, I'm kind of like that. Like I'm holding this bat and it's pissed, number one. Like it doesn't, wants to kill me. Okay, but it's echo, it, it's like, it's like you feel it going in you, but it doesn't go through you. I can't, I'm not like, you know, like I'm, I'm not, I was not on drugs and I was waiting for that. This is not an acid trip. I was on no drugs, okay, literally holding this back, like, I hope that you can all do this someday, because it is crazy awesome. And it's, so, it's happened more than once, because, like, we get back to the junior high, and can you come get this bat? Sure. I'll come get the bat. Nuts, nuts. Okay? All right. Thanks for participating. Can I have the big sheets back? No. You can respect it. Okay, sure. I'll, I'll give you this. I'll take them all. Let me just come around here. Hey, Jabin or Emma. What's that? Are we good to go? You're good to go. Hey, thanks for thanks for joining me. Emma. Hey, Emma, send me yours, will you? Yeah, I will. And then I have the packet. I'll just give it back to you when I get back. That sounds good. Where are you back? 
the third. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.